Hello, guys, and welcome to the Winter Sun podcast number 19. Welcome again. Welcome again. Here, your host is me. This time, and uh, wintry, wintry moods everywhere. Apparently, everybody is almost everybody's on a mountain or whatever on the ice. And uh, I'm here in, uh, next to a Kura, Kura Polku walking here. Uh, I see this oh. somewhere. I don't know where. But however, who are we, where we are, I don't know. How are you guys? We had a little winter, but uh, now it's gone away again. Who it was had like a m- minus me and Azim in Finland. Ah. It was like minus 50, minus 20. Freezing. But now it's again like it looks like spring. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Ho- Temperamental. Hormonal, hormonal times. Yeah. Yeah, how how is Asin's winter? It's from the background, very old tree. You That's moved into winter. a tree. Yeah, yeah. I just started climbing. I was like, enough of this winter. Then it must be high. Where is that from? That's that's actually from Pakistan. Oh, cool. Yeah. So pretty, pretty old tree. I decided to go in the. In Pakistan because of the winter of Finland. So. Oh. Well, is is that your childhood's Tarzan tree? I see some cut <laughs> branches there. I used to hang from them right over somewhere here. Yeah. Just, this, just, yeah, yeah, just there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, how do, how did you know that? Uh, it just looked like a cut that is made by you. Can or you something. make? Can you make guitars from that tree? Hey, why to cut that tree? You have other trees to cut. Ooh, yeah. But it looks like a, a good tree for uh, some guitars. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> okay. It looks it look like a very nice tree. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. For the guitars. It... <laughs> All right. But what is that tree? Is it? Uh, I have no idea. Guitar? It was on a. It was somewhere in the roadside. Actually, it's from a. It's from an old temple. We were okay. just passing by and I took the picture from that. It was, I don't know, how old, very old. I mean, there's no yeah. time frame. It looks very, very yeah. old and all the respects to the tree. I mean, it's, it's, it's really very high. I mean, I could not put it in the background properly, but... Mm. It's very high. <laughs> so if you, if you know some Tarzan <laughs> tricks, you can go get very high. I mean, go very high. Mm. Okay. How how is the uh, the king on the mountain? There's one. Temu. You seem to be quite in a high altitude. How's the oxygen levels? Yeah, all all good here in in the Alps. <clears throat> Temu is right above like my picture, so basically ah, yeah. you can see that he actually reached the top of the tree, and it's yeah, really it's... cold. It's wintry, and ah, there you can see the sky. Yeah, no, it kind of blocked. Yeah. The... That's how tall the tree is, yeah. Okay. All yep. the way from Pakistan to Switzerland, god damn. It. Right. Very high tree. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, all good here. Zurich hasn't had uh, that much snow. Like, we had a few times a little bit of snowfall, but uh, stayed for a few hours, and then otherwise it's been uh, still pretty green and, like, uh, around zero degrees Celsius. But, uh, yeah, in the mountains, of course, it's... Uh, full on full on snow going there actually this week so looking forward to that uh-huh. some skiing or some sledging or yeah snow all, all, all that all snow, that no snow fun nice. in, in, nice. in one go winter yeah. fun yeah at the same all time in. everything yeah. at the same time. yeah yeah they must always been a multitasker yeah. so this... mountain tasker okay sounds really nice sounds really yeah. nice how about there in austria well, there's the Kura Polku here, as you can see, it's a bit, bit muddy, muddy, muddy on the side, but nah, the snow has melted on the valleys mountain wise, of course, same as in Switzerland, but uh, here's like six, seven degrees and looks like early spring again. Yeah. Mm. At least That's your now. regular jogging route. Yeah, there I sleep. I'm sleeping my discs <laughs> there in the Kura Polku. And uh, yeah, 
but yeah, it's in in here, Vienna area and surrounding. So it's a huge valley. So you know, snow is coming for a few days and then it melts after a few days and then a week or two, nothing, and then it snows again, comes and goes. You take long walks. Yeah, I do actually. There are a few few quite high hills where the snow is actually staying. Only a few hundred meters different of altitude, but that makes a huge difference, actually. Mm. Yeah. You're running to the hills. That also, but usually in my head. But that's I remember, not another podcast. Then. I remember when we went to Mexico City. You can instantly feel like the like lack of oxygen. That's very true. Yeah, I, I remember that, and I think with the old band no other back then there was one show in Tai Taipei and it was so moist when you got out from the air conditioned taxi or the van mm. it was also like <gasps> like hard to breathe but altitude wise not the same as in Mexico City because that's that's really high but for me it was the first or second tour on USA when we went to Florida I don't remember it was it the first or second time, but it was so moist and hot. It was like mm. really hard to breathe. Yeah. I remember when we were we were waiting outside to go in to do the show. Oh, like, that, that <laughs> right show. on the street. Then we went in and played the show. Oh my, I, I remember that also because <laughs> we were in the bus and we were being told to stay in the bus because there were some ghetto places close by that it would be not the nicest neighborhood. Yeah, and I, I remember there was one drug addict woman running around the bus and then guiding the traffic and stopping cars and guiding doing, the traffic. doing all That's... kinds of things possible. Yeah. Oy, oy. But the show was pretty fun. I think it yeah. was much tolerable inside than outside. <laughs> yeah. The sh show was really nice. It was kind of like Pizza are the same kind of a vibe as in uh, in New Zealand, mm. kind of like this. Get it to the roots through small club shows that are very intense and very, yeah. very everybody's very close. Also, Dallas last time was really hot. Yeah, but, but fortunately, then it cooled down a little bit during the night. But still, it was crazy hot, but yeah. not that moist. That was good, good thing. Yeah. True. But hey, um, since I have the command this time, being the hostess here, shall we go to the questions from our dear patrons, <laughs> and then a few questions later on to you from Facebook. Sure. No, no more bubbling of this and that talk. No Let's more chit chat. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Cut, cut the bullshit. On point. Okay. <laughs> uh, here we go. Edish, 100. Hellos. Uh, he has two questions here. Let's go. Number one, first, of course, a uh, question for everybody. What do you think is the most beautiful musical instrument among all of them? Orchestral, ethnic, doesn't really matter. Yes, as a hostess, I will answer first is cello, then is other people. Other yeah, master. you took mine. <laughs> I know. Well, <laughs> for me, at least the first would have been Erhu. Ah. Hmm. The Chinese violin. That is a really, really, really nice. But, really, really unique. But cello piece. also is one of my favorites. Beautiful, like beautiful looking or beautiful sounding? Like that's. It's up to you, I guess. All up yours. <laughs> uh, up to you. I would have said cello as well first but uh harp is very nice too um i love piano of course depends on the player too but like a great sounding piano by a great sounding player then that's a great combination and of course guitar yeah i was waiting for that <laughs> one thing i might add i was just talking in, <clears throat> in our forum about string instruments how there's like this High pitch, the whistling uh, overtones like harmonics, like around the 2k kilohertz mm. area. It's really, really hard to mix and really can annoy your ears with those whistling 
like overtones and sometimes they can be in the wrong scale when you're mixing and kind of irritate your ear so they're sometimes really hard to mix but glad there's some plugins out there that can tame those harsh frequencies like okay. su 2 for example and just plain old regular regular eq mm. Asi, what 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 is your opinion it's an indian instrument or let's say like indian basically south southeast asian instrument it's called sarangi maybe that's beautiful okay. for me most beautiful sounding it's very near near to of course very near to the chinese violin as well meaning uh, they have different tonalities but it's um yeah it sounds beautiful so sound any, wise yes is there any sam sample library there should be some i never checked because i always thought that it might be harder to find but Nowadays, I don't think anything is that difficult to find. I wonder if it's on the Ethno World Six. Yeah, because I ha I have it. All right, gotta check it out. Because there's Sarangi. some some like from all over the world. Right, really nice sounding instrument. Mm. Nice. And also East West, uh, they have the Ra Library and uh, mm -hmm. what was the other one? Silk. Silk, right, right. Cool but libraries. at the same time, like. Really, really old school sitares as well. Very beautiful sounding. Of course, yeah. as Temu mentioned, that it depends on the. Um, but when when guitar calls sitar, then it's not beautiful sounding. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. If someone doesn't know, I just mean you know when the frets are bad or it's too low action, guitar sounds like shit. But for sitar, it's a, it's character. It depends on who is playing the sitar and yeah. how it's yeah yeah okay um then there's a question from edis as well to yari uh one of your gems gem the guitars once had a raw shit sticker can you tell us the story why this ended up being on a beautiful lady what lady? what uh <laughs> I still have the guitar. Yari, what have you been doing? <laughs> I don't have my attorney with me, so can't disclose anything. <laughs> Where have you been using your stickers and, and raw sheets? I still have the guitar. I haven't gave it or sold it. Okay. I mean... You have uh, the raw shit. You, 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 ha you have the, now, the, time, the chance now to explain this, please. Well, Dulan from Demon's guitar put it there. I guess his 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 thing thing. I don't I don't really know actually what it means. It's just oh yeah, that that's Rock. pretty cool. So I just kept, kept it there because when I I sent the guitar to Dulan to switch the Floyd to Evertune. So I, nice. I think he has like this. I gotta ask him what's what's the thing about this raw shit. He, he just likes raw shit. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> I guess because he, he's like really more into authentic music, like old school black metal and death metal, and likes kind of raw sound. Maybe it's something to do with that. Oh, that sort of shit. Okay. Yeah. So not like plastic shit. But what? <laughs> oh, like what plastic have you been metal. <laughs> uh, yes. 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 Okay. Well, yeah, that, that was comforting. Uh, okay, let's go onwards. Uh, Kirsten Johnst uh, Johnston has the next question here. Question for everyone. Uh, I know for athletes, it's challenging to compete at higher elevations. Uh, the air is rare, as we say. Are there any challenges playing shows at high elevation? For example, Denver at 1,600 meters above sea level, uh, particularly for singing. Okay, we talked about this now a bit in the beginning. Yeah. Co coincidence. Um, yeah, like I just mentioned, like when the first time we went to Mexico City, I immediately feel like a little off and like kind of weak. But then on top of that, the curse of Montezuma hit me. <laughs> you guys remember? <laughs> what was, I was like, nope, I don't. Really fucked up. 
and it was yeah. the t starting of our tour, so that was not nice. The curse of Montezuma, what? It's Diarrhea. Ah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. and, and a fever, and you know. Raw shit. Raw, Raw shit. shit. Uh, <laughs> not not just not the sticker, yeah. That's the so, yeah. story behind it, guys. Now you know it. But you you can definitely feel it like it's harder to breathe and you can't extend the notes that much and you know. Yeah. What about you guys? You get no. used to it of but I, you just get a little dizzy. I think it was I was a bit big lightheaded through the entire time. Not the entire time, but at least half of the time. Back then in Mexico City, yeah, I got really used to used to that. Or I guess yeah, it, I, don't know. I guess it's about getting used to it. If you live there, then you are yeah, acclimated to mm -hmm. the environment. But I wonder if our human body is used to it that you change the environment all of a sudden to this and that. So I guess it needs. To but we we get some practice in the winters because the seasons change all the time. So, but then we get the flu so also. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I, I I would like to live in a warmer climate. Yeah, where where would you like to live? Well, if you go down to Europe, then it gets a little too hot in the summers. So it's kind of nowhere is good. <laughs> you gotta move all the time. You should have your own elevated. Elevator home or something that goes different <laughs> elevation levels yeah. up and down depends on how warm or cold it is. Yeah, but just in the winter, go a little bit south, and then in the summer, come back to Finland. So mm. that's my plan for my old days. Okay, <laughs> when, I, when I have retired, which is never. When is that? <laughs> Never. Okay. Well, after that. Then. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, next question coming up is from Danny. 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 Field. <clears throat> I, I I hope. Sorry if I'm misspelling. Uh, here's a question for Jar. Um, have you ever heard of the band Atavista? And if so, what do you think of their music? Could you talk a little bit about your old band Artemisia, for example, how you joined the band or whatever you can think of? And um, yeah, and then there's one bonus question: Will be there more releases of your albums and vinyl? Uh, yes, I've heard. Was it Atavista or Atavistia? Atavistia. Yeah. Okay, here it says Atavista, but yeah. okay. Yeah, I've heard them. Like I don't know two, three years ago or something. I remember checking some song, but other than that, I don't really have, I don't, I don't have listened to them. I think the song was pretty good. A similar style than us, I guess. Melodic. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit power metal here and there, double bass. Yeah. yeah. Were they a young band or? Yeah, they're they're pretty young. Uh, Matt, the the main guy, he's got some uh, uh, Finnish uh, relatives. They're from Vancouver, I think. Uh, and and uh, yeah, Matt has been like a long time student of mine. And and a funny connection to the raw shit guitar is that Matt actually has like a very similar guitar to the raw shit gem with the similar kind of big card and like gem modified with the gold ever tune and everything so oh really funny mm -hmm. coincidence is he a fan yeah you could say i think cool. the, the there's a big winters and influence at least on the on the first album that, that they did but i think now they're like maybe uh broadening the influences a bit that's nice yeah that's how it usually happens and what happened to me, you know, when, when you start, you kind of can sound a little bit like your favorite band, but then when, when you keep going on, then you kind of start devel developing your own own style. You can kind of further yourself apart from anyone else. 
that that's a good thing. And what was the question? Artemisia. Uh, Artemisia, yeah. How did you join the band or talk something about your season? Some insights. I guess it was just uh, you know the whole friend group around that time, and they were looking for a second guitarist. And I I, I was at that time playing in NC Ferrum. So I thought this is pretty cool. Good material, like the first demos they have done, and you know I was also like at that time like really liking black metal. I was like, let's try this, try this out, you know. Mm. And I write, wrote a few few songs for the first album. We recorded the first album here in Helsinki, really small studio, but fun times there. And uh, now that I'm fun, fun little tidbits like uh, the guitar sound is like recorded from a ba bass cabinet. <laughs> no, I'm getting interested. It's a gu guitar amp, <laughs> yes, but we ran it through a bass cabinet. Kind of okay. gave it a cool sound. Yeah. And what else? Yeah, that, that first album has like a lot of kind of fun things like this this one piano kind of bling blong like <laughs> one of our close friends like okay play play some piano here and he just went bling blong <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it, it. <laughs> cool <laughs> i like fun, fun things like that are on the album yeah it's really fun album because there's uh, like three guys who kind of uh, were composing the song so there's a lot, a lot of kind of uh, variety between the songs. Mm. I guess you can definitely hear my my songs. You can recognize them; they're a bit more melodic than the others. Janne, who was the second guitarist, he made like more trashy, more black metalist kind of songs. Then Jukka, who played the bass, who also was the bass player of Ensiferum. Not this Yukka. <laughs> not not this dude. The other Yukka. Yeah. There is something about name Yukka. It's always the bass player, you know. This is the second Yukka <laughs> I'm playing the bass with as well. Damnation Plan, Self Blind, oh. and now third. Yeah, three oh. matches. Oh. Yeah. Poor you, poor you, yeah. poor you, oh. Yukka, you, you, Yukka, you, you, Yukka, you, uh, you, you, you. Well, this other Yukka is, I think, he's more, more, more of a guitar player than a bass player. Maybe uh, 50 uh, 60, I don't know. Uh, 50, he, 60. 50 he also, 60. He also likes to make music, and uh, you know, he also, I think he, yeah, he sings nowadays also. Yeah, he has his own like little side projects these days, and he played in tourists, you know, bass. Yeah, true. But yeah, what, what else was in the question? Uh, that was more or less about it, just about Artemisia. And then, oh, yeah. And will there be more releases of your albums on vinyl? Uh, it depends on Nuclear Blast, I think. But probably, yeah. Definitely when new stuff comes, of course, they, they will want to do it in vinyl too. Yeah. But definitely, yeah. All right. Uh, then to the next question, uh, this is from Erika Evil. Where everybody, uh, how many notes can you play approximately in six point sixty six seconds? <laughs> oh. Exactly six point sixty six notes. What? Yeah. Yeah. One, one note per second is pretty, pretty usual speed for me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, if you're that slow, then <laughs> I'm probably one note every 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you only need to play one note. Well, actually, I play the note, but it seems with the bass, if it's only one note, it takes a little longer time. It starts actually, you know, what is that word now in English? It starts yeah. ringing. Yeah, ringing. Well, maybe, maybe it will be enough should, time for those, those seconds. We should feel a bit and take a contest. Close up cameras to pick. <laughs> 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 I 
and then analyze all the notes. Okay, this there this note this note is unqualified. Yeah. <laughs> Out. Disqualified. Yeah. I guess there's some Guinness records. About so Temu said one, players. one per second. I said one per ten seconds. And Ayari, Asim. No, same amount. Six point six six seconds. Uh, notes per six point six six seconds. Yeah. All right. So the same answer as them, basically. Yeah. I say one million notes. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, you can definitely achieve that with your MIDI, right? Definitely. <laughs> that, that, that's actually I don't know. <laughs> that's like me, me. There it is. See. Yeah. Actually, I don't know how capable Cubase is. Oh. Somebody's oh, getting excited. Oh, there's, oh, yeah. there's definitely a limit in the tempo. <laughs> and then there's <laughs> definite limits in the how short the notes can be. Well, at yeah. least Ableton goes up to 999 beats per minute. So put 16 notes to that. And I don't know. Yeah, you record like 44.1 kilohertz. Mm. <laughs> and each note is one sample. Yeah. Oh God! So forty-four thousand notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but no. Uh, let's go onwards. And Rania is here now. Hello, happy you, you, le gentlemen. Happy you. Happy you. Uh. Okay. Uh. You have given us an opportunity to ask any question, so we did for over a year. This time I would like to approach it from a slightly different angle. So the question is, is there anything you would like to share with us, but nobody ever asked? Hmm. Asim. Why me? <laughs> I don't know. You can start from you. Uh, hmm. It could be li li literally anything. Hmm. Could it be? I don't know. I I like. Uh, I'm a headphone sci. Uh, well, sci-fi too, but hi-fi <laughs> enthusiastic. I love. I love good sounding music. Well, probably. Many of you guys already knew knew this. I like bad sounding music. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like too. Sometimes. Yeah, well, actually, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what is a good sound, sound and what is bad <laughs> sounding music. Yeah, it depends on the music. Yeah. And you know, bad and good sounding music, it's subjective. Yeah. For <laughs> Again, example, you can, we can talk about Ulver's Album Nothing Smatrical. That's an amazing album. But does it sound is good it, or bad? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to me, it sounds good. But is it bad sounding or good sounding? Yeah. For me, I, I think about it like, uh, you know, like good sounding is more expensive sounding. Like, because uh, bad sounding, you can easily record with uh, cheap gear. But the good sounding, you need expensive gear. But then, then again, for some, the good sounding can sound bad, <laughs> and the bad can sound to someone good. Yeah, and it depends who's using all those devices and how to use them. So I would just say cheap sound or expensive sound. Both can sound good or bad. <laughs> there, there you go. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Hard to say. Uh, yeah, a question there... that has not been asked. No, something to share with with everybody that nobody has ever asked. Have no, I have I ran naked on the street? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you, oh, okay. TMI. There you go. I've done it too. 
thing. But God damn it, so they have I. Yeah. It's called it's, <laughs> it's called Amuna Mile. Like the egg mile. <laughs> I think I've never heard that before. <laughs> egg mile. That that's already goes like the Finnish cultural heritage, like Poron Kusema. That's and like Muna, the and Muna Mile. That's What? like the next next level of Green Mile, the movie called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Featuring Tom Spanks. Yeah. I remember one time in. What <laughs> <laughs> is the Muna Mile? The, one time the movie, in... There's a dude in a jail crying that they don't let me out to run my mile. <laughs> one time in Connell, Maggie. Me and the boys. <laughs> oh. After sauna, we did like one mile, one mile. <laughs> like we ran almost like a kilometer or something <laughs> naked on the street. Whoa! There you go. <laughs> That's gotta be a Guinness record. Does, yeah. Does any other? Uh, People live in that neighborhood anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Moved out. Everybody waking up to their coffee like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, morning, they came, morning, they came, morning, they came running with you, probably. Morning, guys. Naked guys. Just <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. It's> like. <laughs> <laughs> what? What am I drinking? <laughs> yeah. Demo has been silent. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I think that. there's gonna be some. And how's your he's Muna gonna talk this. <laughs> <What's> your... <laughs> he's gonna. He's gonna... <laughs> how's your Muna mileage? <laughs> no, I, I think it's actually very low. I don't think I've ever done the egg mile. Low Have Muna you ever mileage. done Poron uh, Um, Poron is a distance, so that's yeah. true. I, but I can ask whatever, right? It <laughs> doesn't make sense or not. Yeah, the the most I've done in in this fashion would be like from a sauna to like uh, maybe a hundred meters to like uh, snow and then jump there bare naked. You you would have had your chance to you know turn around and do, do the whole month. talk something else <laughs> or no yeah, yeah. They try to, to the find angels. try to find the lake run around like do the do, the do the mile with us as a snow angel yeah. <laughs> It's the fun Finnish stuff that we do over here. Yeah, <laughs> you have to have some fun. Come join. Yeah, come join the Muna Mile. Yeah, the annual annual winter sun Muna Mile. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they they actually do these things in Helsinki. I think there's an organized like a naked run. Is there? Um, yeah. Hmm. They, they stole But our idea. Isn't that against the law? Um, probably at some level. <laughs> But yeah, but there is a nudist beach, beach in Helsinki, or at least there used to be. <laughs> what, what Haven't been the, there though. What does this have to do with this? <laughs> but just like I, I mean, but hey, I will just answer. Yes, there is. <laughs> Haven't <laughs> been there though, but I'm going to. <laughs> but hey, do annual, the mileage there, like annual, yeah, like, annual winter sun <laughs> Muna mile, starting from the. Uh, nude beach and then running all the way to the mountain, yeah, but it, mountain of Huasar. But it's more pointless there because oh, it's allowed. <laughs> you gotta do it when it's not allowed. <laughs> that make, makes it fun. <laughs> so a quick googling tells me that there's actually a run called Nakukympi actually running 10 Maybe. kilometers mile Uh, naked 10 kilometers. Yeah. Now I remember. I, I've seen in the news or something. <laughs> so now I, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> in the news <laughs> headlines. 100 250 participants. Well, that's not well. That's not much, actually. Well, that's well some, if, that's if you some... see this group of naked people, and <laughs> that, I think much. it's quite much, yeah. Uh, if I would see that amount of people over some of the street, it's like hundred perverts. Yeah, <laughs> that's some that's some wiggle and jiggle there, still. 
<laughs> Getting cheeky with it. That as well. Who remembers Will Smith? Of course. Who could forget Will Smith? Uh, okay. Let's go onwards. Next question. Lexter 66. That uh two questions coming. Um uh okay hi there everyone i have two questions a little hi. technical this time but it's part of the winters on atmospheric universe that you guys create on stage and i'm really curious about how to do it okay first uh mm. first one is about the lights at your shows how do you select select uh them up and so on i guess it's something pre-recorded, so certain lights match certain parts of the show and so on. And also, I guess that maybe Yari is also selecting the colors and everything since it, it is his concept of every album. Then we want to take this. Sure. Um, we've done it a few different ways through the years, obviously. In the beginning, we didn't have our own lighting guy, so it was often like whatever uh, house light guy there would be. Um, then at some point we started bringing, uh, but we would our, give our direction guy. to the house guy. Yeah, yeah. At th those times we would still like mm. have maybe a list of like okay, more blue in this song and more yellow in this song, to kind of give some kind of idea. And then, well, I think it was pretty early when we started actually having our own light guy with us. Um, and first it was just manually. We didn't even like uh, have the whole backing track system figured out that well in the beginning so it was yeah more like uh yeah old school every song would be manual um, manual and different from show to show and of course like the lighting gear changes from show to show quite a bit as well so it always depends on what is available we uh only only recently we, we had like our own lights actually with us like some of the lights mm. um then um since i think 2000 uh, 15 maybe shows we actually got our like more regular lighting guy or was it only since the forest tour started i, I guess think it we was only... found han han when we started touring for the four seasons four seasons yeah so probably we were deliberately 16. looking for a guy who could automate and sync, sync the lights to the music yeah, because at that point we had the backing track system figured out pretty pretty well to the point where we had like the click tracks in everybody's ear and the guitar sounds were changing with the MIDI and no tap dancing needed on stage. So so then we wanted to have the lights like programmed uh, with the MIDI as well, uh, basically time code. So when the backing tracks are running, there's like a part of the lights at least can be programmed to to always be the same and, you know, have a more consistent show and save a bit of trouble from the from the lighting guy. So then, when we would do pre uh, pre production rehearsals before the tour, then uh, Han, the lighting guy, he would actually record the whole set that we would play through, and then he would take his time to to actually like program the lights. Yeah, fine, fine tune with the show, and then yeah. then then I think we had some input here and there, but but I think he came up with a lot of the a lot of the ideas and, and uh, then different tours we had like slightly different lighting sets uh, um, like uh, being rent uh, depending on like yeah what was possible budget wise and also like space wise to bring with us so so yeah. it, it has really varied over the over the years um, there's still some ideas that uh, we've thought about which would be cool in the future like maybe adding some uh, video screens at some point but uh, yeah there, there's a lot of ideas like we also tried snow machine at, at uh, one show in Helsinki and, and uh, that that sort of elements I think would be cool at some point. Or the foam foam machine. Yeah more yeah. more a foam machine really. <clears throat> but yeah that's well, that's how we do it. Hondo has been doing really nice really great job. Yeah, 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 yeah. He came up with a lot of great ideas. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the coloring ideas. It's like uh, I kind of talked with him about that, like which song has. Because for me, when I write music, I 
see parts parts of the song or the whole song in some color and kind of reflects also all the, the album covers and stuff like that yeah yeah we got re really lucky finding him uh, um i met him kind of uh uh by accident and then like he approached me and told told me like that he's a he's a fan of the band and like really experienced light tech but had been doing mostly like uh, a lot of like uh corporate shows uh at that point mm. um so then yeah then yeah, when uh, we first met him he looked like really like a like a corporate guy like <laughs> not like heavy metal guy at all but th didn't he say he had a long hair yeah yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It took like one show, and then so the, like, the all beast. right. Yeah, well, then it took like one show, and then the beast came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but he he had a really good uh, uh, understanding of the songs already previously, like the, the previous material he was very familiar with, so that that uh, helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. but <clears throat> on the last U.S. tours, we couldn't afford to bring him with us, and like lots of really expensive gear. But we had uh, Sandra doing like manual lights for on the gear uh, on the tour. Mm -hmm. At first, it, it was a little bit harder, but then during the tour advanced, we kind of made it better and kind of uh, talked with her all the time, and it got really, really good at the end or like the halfway the tour. Mm -hmm. Like she did an amazing job just with you know manual light lighting. Yeah. It, obviously, it's much more difficult than to you know to uh, automate them yeah of course automate has the pre mo lots more pre-work but then when you do it manually you gotta really be be in the <laughs> like in hitting the buttons and stuff yeah yeah we did a lot of like uh, um reviewing the shows after the after the, the gig in the bus like watching the video yeah. and okay like let's change this next day stuff like that so yeah we we do pay attention to the, the lights yeah yeah it definitely helps with the mood of the show mm, definitely yeah. and especially the automated lights they really kind of uh it's the same thing if you it's kind of this effect when you listen to music and there's a music video or even a live video it the music somehow just sounds better <laughs> even even if it's just uh, like there's just a video but it's the same sound Mm. But but in your mind, it just somehow makes it more magical or sound sounding better. Yeah. Yeah, true. But I have to at the same time now that we're talking about our crew guys like Tupi front of the house and Miro, Miro and Rosku, the guitar techs and and hand, handling the backing tracks and everything. Like we had a really nice bunch when it comes to the Winter Sun crew. Right? Yeah. It would be nice to play some shows with the whole bunch again. Yeah, for sure. Good people. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, second part of Lexter 666 question. Uh, same thing about the guitar sound. I see on other artists that they have these pedals on stage and they switch themselves between sounds. But you guys play them flawless. I guess those are programmed for sound to go win. Yes, they are. Go ahead, guys. Then okay, we want to take this one too. Yeah, same way. Uh, uh, first, <clears throat> the first tours that we did, we would just like uh, have our own old school amps and cabinets on stage. And then festivals would be always like some random backline amp, whatever was available. <coughs> what year did we switch? I think uh, we got the Axe in 2009. That early? So, yeah, when when it came out, yeah. Did we have the stuff already on the first US tour? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did, 2012. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. So then uh, <clears throat> after getting the Axe we got to figure out like how to program them with the Cubase to have the, the backing tracks and the uh, click track running at the same time and switch the sounds automatically and yeah that was a big help to not to have to do the tap dancing we have about a, <laughs> about uh, 30 presets during the show like different volume levels and different effects and stuff so yeah so basically you make two tracks 
in Cubase, like MIDI tracks, to send the MIDI messages to the Axe FX during the song. So when the song backing tracks go into Cubase, there's points that send MIDI, MIDI note to the Axe FX, and then it changes the sound. Yeah. So then it's the whole whole thing is automated. But to com comparison to this, the bass sound, not. <laughs> You only have there, one, there's, one there's, preset. <laughs> there's one present, one pedal, one sound throughout the whole set. If there is some changes, some basic chorus or something, then we have a, agreed with the front of the house guy to be that he would do. So are you things, are you feeling jealous? No, I'm I'm <laughs> feeling simple. <laughs> Jukka, Jukka, how is this actually with Nightwish? Do you have uh, multiple sounds? Uh, that is handled. Kind of like the same way. Then so you I'll, don't you don't do any switching yourself. No. At the moment, no. But do you know if the front of house actually switches the sound, or is, is it more or less the same? There is more or less the same, but there is there are certain changes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, it's like a, that's one example that you can come up with what sort of setup, however you want to agree on. So. Depends on the band and depends on the songs and however how it is the best solution. Yeah. yeah. It can be tricky sometimes, you know, you gotta make sure the system works so it can cause a little bit stress before the show. So is it gonna work? <laughs> like we yeah. had had some cases where some reason didn't change and the guitars are like because in some parts we are using like heat shifter. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Best, the best was the intro of Death and the Healing in Tokyo. What happened there? But but that wasn't about the media. That was, uh... Yeah, that was yeah, the pedal. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pedal didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> but, but was it at some but, some show? It, it was, was really. It was one show in in Switzerland in where it said seventies, Fratten, right? Mm. Uh, we'd have some the out, hot show outdoor, the, outdoor, the sun, thing, sun. outdoor thing there, and we start playing time and the pitch shifting. Yeah, it wasn't Switzerland, it was, uh, I think it was Metal Days. What was it, Metal Days? I think it was, it was like Hungary days. or something, or maybe okay, it was maybe. All, all of them. But, uh, but all I, I, of <laughs> them, because it was, it was really nice that I'm actually playing correctly, and you guys are fucking up. But since you guys play, like, I, oh god. That must must have been really really nice. <laughs> that was chaos. Yeah. So I was hearing it. So like of course I was like, what the fuck am I totally nuts? No, I am playing it correctly. What the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> so then then you have to kind of uh, when you notice you have to go manually back to the stage and change the preset yourself from the axe effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th this was part of the learning curve. This was when we, I think, first implemented the, the backups, which were the the steel pedals on stage to change the MIDI, and then like the computer mm. doing the changing as well. But then if the if the MIDI cables were somehow like not working for the backups, then that would mess up the the actual MIDI changing as well. And yeah, then and that would mess up the feeling and the entire playing and. Yeah, Concent concentrating on on playing and performing is yeah right. So so that happened I think a couple of times where it was totally wrong preset, and then we just got rid of the backup pedals, and then yeah. since since then I think there was no issues with the MIDI switching anymore. Yeah, mostly it's been fine, working every time. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, let's go onwards. Uh, next one is from. Orange Wong uh, to them. Uh, been teaching on Skype for all these years. Do you at times experience any nerve wracking moment, which only happens teaching online, such as bad internet connection or poor audio video condition from both of your and the students' sides, which cause difficulty for the lessons? Uh, yeah. Do these factors always bother you or? You've been, been immune to everything for a long time. Do you ever have a, any moment when you find certain lessons was a pain, such a pain in the ass that you need a long deep breath? 
Or is Torres you... thinking about becoming a teacher? I don't know. Or how do you usually cope with frustrating and exhausting feelings between lessons, if any at all? Hey, Torrens. Yeah, we we did some lessons together a while back. Um, yeah, of course, sometimes there is some technical issues when dealing with the internet. And, and uh, um, usually before lessons, I would uh, uh, give the students, if it's like scheduling the first time, I would give them some tips how to how to avoid these problems, like if possible to run an Ethernet connection instead of a Wi-Fi connection. Um, sometimes, uh, um, sometimes we do Skype, sometimes we do Zoom, usually depending on what the student has been using before. Mm. And, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, then I usually give a link to the speed test to check the connection speed. If, if your connection is like super low, then, then probably doesn't work that well on, on a video call. Um, but honestly, like. When I first started doing the, the Skype stuff back in 2013, then it was definitely much more common, but the connections have gotten much, much, much better. I mean, of course, computers too, like the whole technology is advancing so fast that nowadays it's quite rare that there's a, a like a, a dropout. I mean, there's sometimes a little glitch, of course, in the video. That's that's very normal that, you know, you lose a half a second or, or something. That, uh, picture or voice disappears and then you have to reset but uh, but uh, something that would really disturb the lesson that hasn't really happened that much uh, anymore in the recent recent years I would say and then how, how to deal with that <clears throat> um, if, if there's an issue that's that's uh, um, yeah, beyond the control of, of, of the, the student then then I would just like uh, say that okay that's let's reschedule it and, Sorry that it didn't work out now with the with the connection. Let's try to may, maybe uh, see if you can get a better connection somewhere else, or maybe use different different setup, and and then let's try to do a new session. But really, didn't have to do this in a, in a long time anymore. Um, and what comes to in between the lessons, taking deep breaths. Um, um, I think at this point, uh, I don't really feel too stressed about the, the lessons. I mean, uh, it's something I've been doing since 2006. I was just thinking the other day that I've probably done like 10,000 hours of teaching at this point or, or even more. So it's, it's uh, I think I have a pretty good routine to it and, and kind of can, can, uh, uh, handle most most things so it's it's not something i i would have to worry about too much uh or take too much deep breaths it's more like there's often fun challenges like uh like uh what what comes to like uh giving the students like the the instructions that really help them but uh, i really enjoy that part of teaching like finding those individual ways of like uh, pointing students in the right direction and finding things that uh, inspire them but but like yeah not not uh, not a lot of deep breaths have to be taken between the lessons no oh that's good yeah. okay uh let's go to the next question okay mr ap cortela is here hello hostess and the gentleman Yes, uh, shitty year 2021 for artists is ending soon, but even so, what were the highlights of the year for each of you? Hmm. Uh, Let's think about it. <sighs> me, me personally, highlights, uh, obviously. It's the Nightwish, Nightwish thing, and uh, in 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 many ways, uh, meeting new amazing people, uh, really like-minded, really heartful people, and uh, the concerts that we were able to play because 
it was nice to be normal for a few days, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And all the uh, joy and excitement of everybody on those shows. So you kind of saw what, what all of us are belonging and waiting and that things will be back to normal. Yeah, for me, it's been like a, <clears throat> quite like not a big ups and downs. But for me, the highlights definitely have been, you know, just spending so much time just at home making music to go out in the summer and a few times in the autumn to see friends, you know, have a nice party. That's always been a big highlight to not go like cabin feverish. <laughs> so those definitely have been highlights just just to see people <laughs> but then every day there's little highlights you know because i'm making music all the time so when i get over some difficult parts or come up with some good new melodies or synth or orchestration uh, uh, arrangements or got some good vocal takes done those are all, always little highlights in my li life so that's why I, I do music because it's it's really rewarding to me mm. so there's always little highlights when making music well i have to say that one highlight also is that I heard the fourth uh possible and new thing winters and stuff and when it comes to night wishes music that I'm I'm just view pure uh, in pure gratitude and being very lucky guy that I can play uh, really really great music in this both both bands and yeah just wanted to add up that at that also so your whole light is sort of a highlight yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> We can, we can, of course, we can turn the full, full uh, fini finish mode on here and start talking about the other sides of 2021 and 2020, what is not, and all the things that are not happening. The bad highlight. Yeah, the bad <laughs> highlights. <laughs> yeah. Asin Teemu. Well, from my side, definitely opening for Nightwish was definitely the highlight. And that was um, that was interesting because Yuka was playing the first time on stage for the audience as well. And I was opening. That was my first show of the year. And opening for Nightwish, that was just definitely the highlight. So, yeah. That. And the other one is being able to travel this year out of Finland. So that was that was nice. Mm. Nice to get out of Finland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice to be in Finland and being here and there. It's kind of Let's put it this way, yeah. being able to travel outside Finland, not to get out. No. Yeah, yeah. More I mean, politically correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> damn, I must, I think I have to say that, damn, I regret it still that I didn't do the thing on that show when you were opening. Yeah. That I you played Death in. and the Healing, and I was thinking in my head... Una mileage on the stage. The... <laughs> <laughs> I was so thinking that I'm gonna walk there now and just come to the mic and say, "Yeah, naked." It's a good song. I think I know this one, and then just walk out. But then I was just thinking that how you were there in so your element that I thought that I'm gonna screw it up completely, and it's so intimate, intimate, and everything. And I was like, "Damn it, I didn't do it." <laughs> Next time, nice. Yeah, yeah. hopefully, yeah. that'd be interesting. Muna mileage. From Yuka. Oh, oh, yeah, that. No, I didn't sign up for that. Ah, okay. <laughs> Get a few beers in you, and here we go. <laughs> okay, let's. <laughs> 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 
Teemu. Yeah, I was thinking like no, no like huge highlights or or like downs. I think it's been pretty. I mean, super, hey, small uh, things matter also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think most of all, what? just being super. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I don't know what this the, the blondie is referring here. Sorry, <laughs> Demo, please continue. Yeah, just most of all, being super um, happy that uh, you know everything is more or less still okay you know i think like uh it's difficult times for a lot of people and the world mm -hmm. situation so just have to be grateful of like uh, still staying healthy and you know being able to work and yeah. you know um so i think teaching wise it's it's been like the the most teaching I, i've ever done because there's there wasn't really any other work really that i could do so that that has been really kind of the highlight i think like Mm. Uh, making a lot of really great progress with the uh, old and new students. That's been okay. a lot of lot of fun, and just getting to play guitar more, and and at the same time spend more time with the family. So so that's uh, mm. I think that's that's the highlight. I mean, still of course missing getting back to back to playing shows and, and touring and traveling more, but uh, at the same time it's it's been a kind of a nice little break as, as well. Yeah. Yeah, health is definitely, if you're healthy, that's a big highlight, always. Hmm. True. Um, hey, AP is also here adding that, and can we possibly expect something from Winter Sun next year? No promises, but could there be something? No promises, but there could be something. <laughs> And I'll leave it at that. We should do the, cool. the other highlight for me was I um, marked one year anniversary of the Twitch channel that I had in 2021. Oh, nice. So mm -hmm. that was that was interesting. Cool. Yeah. 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 Though I have not been streaming that often um, for the past month mm -hmm. and a half or two, but still it was it was great to build up the community like that. And then, um, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, let's go to the next Marlene. Seasons greetings, guys. Likewise. Greetings. greetings. Um, I can't remember if this, this has been asked before, so many podcasts now, but it is a question for each of you. What is something that people like us patrons who, who only know your public persona uh, would be surprised about you? What is something that people like us patrons be surprised about you? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Do you understand this correctly? I don't know. Please, guys, if you know, understand this correctly. Anybody? So I, I she to wants us to sell snitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Please go ahead and sell Yari. What what could I snitch about myself? Hmm. Then we'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so, e either a positive or a negative, somehow surprising thing for the fans that already know quite a bit of us, right? Yeah. Hmm. Um, um, hmm. Silent moments. I, I've I've uh, never tried uh, uh, cheese fondue, which is a big thing here in Switzerland. Uh, but uh, um, I was like, "What? The? Oh, yeah, and true. Damn, uh, damn right. You should you should so, do it soon." Yeah, but I kind of uh, don't like the sp the the smell of that at all. So it's uh, 
probably not going to trade anytime Chiefs. soon. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Asim, you lost. <laughs> you lost the silence. Well, I said already well, that everybody goes before me, so. <laughs> Yeah. Yari or Asin. Yeah. I, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. I would have said the same, so I don't need to say anything. I, don't I mean, let's say it that way. <laughs> Maybe most of the people would not know, as from my personal side, that I'm a, I'm a lacto-vegetarian. Maybe that might be a news for the others. That's something that we didn't discuss ever. So, there you go. <laughs> I mean, you can search it up. I mean, it's very yeah. easy. But Google. Not Google. lactose, but lacto. Yeah. Everybody's so food as, related. As, as Yuka says, I'm a vegetarian. Me? Yeah, you came up with that terminology. I think Veg- you mix up the different Yukas and the bass players. No. <laughs> vegetarian. Did Are I? You? Yes. Oh, yeah, I was referring to the terrier dog breed. And yes. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I came up with <laughs> something. I don't know why why this came to my head. ADHD salad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know why this came into my head, but uh, yeah. I've never been allergic to anything ever. But now I think I am to red onions. And I love red onions. Oh, okay. That's the first. And um, uh, like five or six years, maybe more, I had this. um, Because I used to eat red onions like regularly in my food. But I don't know. I'm not 100% 100 sure. But like five, six years ago, I got this like itching all over my body. And it got really bad. The doctors say it could be just the winter climate, the dry air, you know, too much uh, coffee, salt, uh, sugar, or something like that. Mm. And uh, but it could be all those things. But I think it was also the red onion, because well, like you figure like, that out. Well, well, now now I haven't been eating them in a long time. Have you been eating yellow, not, gold, shallots, uh, different, uh, no, di- different onions? Not, not usually. Garlic, maybe, maybe once in a year. But That's now, not an onion. Oh, okay. But now one day, Garlic I bought onion. some red onions and I, uh, like, yeah. put a big chunk on my plate. And that evening, I got crazy itch on my head and like a little bit to the body. Like, uh, why the hell is this itch here again? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. So then, then, then I start thinking, what, what have I changed in my diet, or, you know, what, what has changed? Mm. Uh, fuck, could it be the red onion? And I'm not hundred percent sure, but that's my guess. Maybe I need to try again. <laughs> but now, after that, I haven't again been eating anything, and I've been totally fine. You don't just that one, just, <laughs> but just that one time when I ate red onion again after a long time, like crazy, it's I couldn't sleep. Like ah, fuck. So yeah, that's one surprising thing. You? Oh yeah, me. Uh, so like snitch. Everything about every yourself. Snitching food related. Yes, I have tried the wiener snitzel. <laughs> no, that's not, yeah. <laughs> not not too American, sorry. Uh, oh my. I'm still still in the thinking mode. I was listening to everybody. I cannot think and listen at the same time, you know. And I'm still thinking now in the thinking mode again. 
You like to take long walks in the kurapolku. Yeah, I hit my head too many times the kurapolku, so I can't come up with anything at the moment that be a funny snitch. Yeah, I've never played a seventh string, string bass. Let's, me, ne- let's... me either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played a nine string guitar. I don't think I have either. Mm. Though, though they had one in Levitukku for a while at least. Huh. But I guess they are equally rare seven string basses and nine string guitars. And I haven't played sitar. Mm. Asim, you should bring sitar from Pakistan. Yeah, oh, that was my plan. I had two options either to get a rubab or a sitar, but mm. I chose rubab. So I have a rubab. It's not rubab, rubab. It's an instrument. It's a pretty nice mountainous instrument. <laughs> rubarb, yes, exactly. How is the sound? Yukka. Mm, yeah, you're changing the question here, Yukka. You didn't answer yet. Yukka. Or you did. What? Yeah. You know what this means? It's empty. That means. <laughs> That means I gotta go for a little bit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wow. regular. Ask ask some question, meanwhile. Yeah, hit it away. Uh, okay, what shall we what shall we now reveal about Yari? We know some things that we could snitch yeah. Yeah. snitch from of him. Uh, do we he likes to pay visits like these? Sometimes. Yeah, that's, sometimes on the uh, when when he really should um yeah but okay well however but um actually, you're asking about the sound of the instrument yeah. uh the sound of the instrument is more like mm, um let's say mandolin meets banjo in a beautiful way mm-hmm. there is actually one guy who had done uh, death and the healing on rubab as well I remember I saw some video somewhere. He made a cover of it on Rubab. Okay. Yeah, that was that was pretty nice sounding one. So if people are able to find it somewhere, or I will find it. I'll post it on the forum as well. That was that was pretty nice. It sounds really, really very vast, very um, echoey. Like it has a percussive kind of a percussive sound as well. So but it's it's since I'm not the familiar with mm-hmm. that instrument that uh is it completely different than a sitar or are, you, are they like cousins in no 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 that's a bit different than sitar yes right. okay. sitar more has resonance more much more um openness while this has very percussive oh, tacky okay. sound okay and um yeah i mean there are quite many strings it depends like what size of the rubab that you have i have a I think I have a medium size, so it's, that it has hmm? resonant uh, like the the strings which are just for you know resonance, and then there are three main strings which are nylon strings that you kind of really play with, and okay. it only has three frets that are like with the fret wires which are made from the nylon string as well. Okay, so it has a very interesting sound to that and rest is just fretless so very Ooh, sounds sounds more challenging to play yeah yeah what is this podcast about i hear things like small things matter and i have a medium size <laughs> it's uh I think... it's good it's good that yeah. this guy is sometimes <laughs> taking up going exactly. going to the toilet in, <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the meantime right, right. Yeah. okay next question okay Let's go on words. <laughs> Pete is here. Happy upcoming Christmas and New Year, everyone. Likewise. Hello, Pete. Uh, okay. This is this is mainly for Yari, but everyone can give their own opinion. What are the best plugins on a budget for amateur home demos? Like the most mix ready, mm-hmm. easy easy to mix synth drums, like Stephen Slate, GGD, for example, and just basically very bare bones. Maybe even some black metal territory stuff. 
Does Cubase own plugins have some useful VSTs, etc., uh, etc.? Just to keep it extremely simple and easy to just compose music. I have a problem that that there's too much stuff available, like plugins, settings, etc. So I get stuck to mm. just finding and trying stuff and end up not composing anything. I want to make a, te a template with simple and cheap plugins that sound decent and without too much hassle, just so I can get into composing and experimenting with some more advanced plugins later. I have Cubase Elements 11 and Reaper. Yeah. I would definitely say <coughs> Cubase stock plugins are good, but I don't really use them. I I would say first thing, most important plugin is the EQ. And I would say for me, the best is definitely the Fab Filter Pro Q3 at the moment. Mm. Uh, you can do pretty much anything with that. So also, also dynamic EQ, which is very handy for certain situations. Go ahead, Asim. That, with that, uh, as you said, you have a Reaper. The best thing is actually Reaper as being an open source DAW, an open source platform. So there's this one gentleman who has made exact replica of Pro, like uh, FabFilter Pro Q3, exactly the same. So you're able to five that. It's called Rea, R E A E Q, no. Damn it, I forgot about it. But check it, like Reaper has that for free. So basically, if you use Reaper as your source of, um, uh, as source as a DAW, then you can use it there. But now, yes, continue. Yeah. So that's on the budget right there, free for you. Yeah, that's a good tip. Also, I would say all the Fab Filter plugins are really great. Uh, the DS series, amazing. The limiter is very good. Although these days I've been liking more the Wise, uh, the W Wise, uh, was DK1 or MK1 something limiter, and I can get one or two dB louder with that, rather than the Pro L2, which is the fat filter. I would say good compressor, still really old, uh, is the Waves API uh, 2500, really great uh, compressor. Uh, I think Waves sells it like $29. So that's still a must have for me. Of course, 1176 compressor is a must have, especially for vocals, at least for me. There's a lot of different options there. There's probably some uh, free ones either. For me, I, I love the UAD, but also the Wave CLA is really great. So that's great for vocals. I, I like to use it like just put the fastest attack and fastest release. And, and uh, that's kind of my vocal chain recording. But then I even compress uh, in the mix even more. So I like to have the vocals really compressed. Let's see what else. These days, Sooth 2 definitely is uh, one thing I can't live without. It just uh, makes everything smoother and tames those harsh 2 to 4K, even 5K, like harsh frequencies. But you, you need to use it subtle because uh, you can easily go overboard with it. Let's say what else? EQ compressor covered. Reverbs. These days I've been using the Liquid Sonics reverbs. They're really great, uh, but they're a bit expensive. Waves have some really good reverbs. I used the Manny, Manny Marquin a signature collection. There was he had a delay and a reverb. Re very simple and very handy and very good sounding. Uh, what else? Guitar sims. Sorry, what? Guitar sims. Guitar sims. Definitely my favorite is the Neural DSP Cali at the moment. And also the Nameless. Those two are, are my favorites. I have a still found. Sorry, what? But, 
But now with all that, the budget is already 1K. What's the budget? Yes. Well, the budget was cheap, cheap, cheap as, as possible, possible, but would still sound decent. So maybe... Um... Well, I, I gave some alternative cheap. I mean, neural DSP plugins aren't that expensive, especially now we just had a Black Friday. They were like oh, yeah. minus 50%. 50% off. Yeah. Right. So but that's you... also one to use it always by only on Black Friday. <laughs> but one thing is also the Slate digital bundle, but then you have then you are kind of hooked into that paying paying the twenty bucks every month. Was it? Or actually, you or can ten buy or for a ten or yearly subscription as well. I think that was one twenty or one thirty yeah. euros. Yeah, that bundle is really good yeah. with, with the price. I mean, it comes they, with add, they add plugins as well. They add plugins all the time, and then there's also really good students like the Aina too, and uh, yeah, it's a really if, good bundle. If, if if but if you're really like starting this whole thing from from the beginning, I'd rather first check the ones that you have in your door and start learning yeah. how these different different yeah. tools work, and then start the, buying stuff. But definitely, I would say get those cheap, uh, like the 1176 from Waves, 29 bucks, or maybe the whole bundle is there. There's LA-2A also and LA-3A, also good compressors. And those are the classic compressors. You need, really need to kind of know about them because they they've been used for a reason. So they are really great. And the API 2500. What about uh, uh, orchestral things? Well, now East West has the, also the subscription. You can get all of their libraries. It's 29 bucks or something for a month. But still, then it's like you have to pay every month. But mm -hmm. then you get everything. But also there's the caveat that then you need a lot of hard drive space and fast hard drives to run the samples. Mm -hmm. So if you want to run like symphonic libraries, it can get expensive. There's a lot of... Lot of Recently, I've been liking the Spitfire libraries. I have a couple of them, the Hans Zimmer strings. That's expensive. Yeah. And the Abbey Road one. Yeah, I have those two. I don't know any... about... Uh, yeah, sorry. Awesome, go ahead. I don't know about Cubase, but as since I became the Ableton artist, I can highly recommend that Ableton nowadays... I'm pretty sure any DAW is capable of doing that. But Reaper as an open source, as I mentioned, that's the best buy, so to speak, because Reaper is capable of doing everything that any DAW does, so to speak, nowadays because of the technology and the upgrades of every other DAW, any DAW is capable of doing everything. But let's talk about, in a sense, with Ableton. Ableton stock plugins are as powerful in the market as any other plugins there are as well. So from the starting point, you actually get orchestral libraries for free with it, which is already there. You get some amp simps for free as well. And so you get like pretty much the bundle already there for you that you need to start creating music. And you already have a very interesting synth, which is included in Ableton as well, by which you can create different kind of sounds and all that kind of stuff. So eventually, uh, with uh, five, 500 euros, I don't know the original price of uh, the Ableton 11, but with that, all in all, you get the full package in there that you don't have to invest like uh, too much into subscriptions and all that kind of things. So yeah. that starting point, all in all in one place, not worrying about this company, that company, this company, that company. So starting point, at least for a year or two, so that you get your demos rolling or your production rolling. And then slowly and gradually by the time when the Black Friday comes in, you can start picking out a few things, try them out or so on. I mean, that would be my suggestion in that way. Are there any, um, maybe because uh, he's asking here that um... I would say worry about getting good EQ, good compressor, good limiter and good reverb and good delay. Those five things, if you get just one from one company, you don't need to worry about anything else, really. What about then, uh, he's saying some black metal territory. I'm, I wonder if he's asking that 
are there some ready bundles for different music styles? Mm-hmm. I mean, all those apply to black metal as well. Mm-hmm. You can make anything sound bad. <laughs> uh, so actually, tone tracks have a very interesting plugin, which is called EZ, so Easy Mix two i think so or i don't know if they made a three or something like this so that's a very quick way of making your demo sounding good enough Mm. but then you don't really learn the logic behind things how they are done and how you can achieve different things by experimenting so if you're just looking for mm -hmm. easy keys and easy drummer and easy mix they're all from tool tech right yeah i I wouldn't really go that route me too no. I think it's more important to learn to EQ and learn to compress Correct. for real. Yeah. Because that, there you that, only that will, work with the then presets. You, then you can handle every situation. Mm. Because if you just rely on presets, then you don't really learn anything. But maybe that is that is very true. But maybe in this way, the road is if somebody chooses to use these as a home demo, and then if those go yeah, for forward, dem- then demoing. someone else, else makes them, and this person doesn't want to do them. Yes, him or in, herself. That's a good point. In that case, they can work great for sure. And even there are good, good enough amp sounding uh, like guitar amps. Yeah. Uh, the presets, their signature models as well. From I don't remember how many people. Andy, Andy Sneep has some. Misha Mansoor has some. I think Andy James had some or something like this. But there are quite. Ola has some. Ola England. Yeah. So I mean. That is the easy route. I mean, I think it's going to cost you around, don't know the price, but probably 200 euros on Black Friday. Maybe it would be different. So all in all, but then you're lacking orchestral VSTs. So yeah, that's always probably the most that. expensive part. Yeah. Of the situation. Do, do any companies have these orchestral like scenes or similar well, things for a certain different styles like? Like There's few companies that, that that sell cheaper. Then what was that one company that you were talking about also? Hmm. Like some companies have these like kind of collections, like a collection library of like everything, a little bit yeah. from everything, yeah. and then you can get really far with it. I think East West has also like this Goliath thing. Okay. If you just want to buy, but they have the subscription. There's a pretty nice company which is called Nucleus, but then again, it's expensive for it. trying everything at mm. the beginning. Maybe that so, was actually what, what I was thinking about. It is capable of giving you and taking you around for the metal music easily, unless you can even make film scores with that all in all in one plugin, basically. But then again, if you're sticking to metal and black metal and want to use the orchestrations, is yeah, kind of kind of depends what kind yeah. of black metal is it? Is it like Demo Borgir or more old, old school cellar sounding? Yeah, <laughs> black metal. Yeah. If you want more old school, then it's like get a really cheap uh, real analog amp and mic it with some cheap mic and in the cellar, of course. Now dark, dark just, cellar. Or now it is just use your you know phone and. There you go. You have a ready mix. <laughs> put it in the middle of the room. Mix the ready zone. around it. That's it. <laughs> to go. Oh yeah. Hey, sm- smaller thing. Not smaller thing, but one thing. Bass wise, I think. Uh, okay. Of, of course, the ready ready things that that many dogs have are all right. But I would say neural DSPs, the two bass plugins, are insanely good. Yeah. yeah what's the good. what's the first one that they did? Uh, uh, Alpha Romeo. Oh, sorry. What? <laughs> no, that, that's uh, a... not the not oh, the cars. Doing sorry. Cars. Yeah, yeah. They're doing no. the cars. All right. Not not Alpha Omega. Um, no. Now I have a blackout as well. The other one is Parallax. Parallax. Yeah. Yes. Parallax. Yeah, yeah, but the first one. And the first one is just. I think. Yeah, it's just yeah, but the first one is really really great. I use it all yeah. the time. I think it's just called the Darkless. Dark, 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 dark glass. Dark glass suite, suite or something yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Really, really good. One. Easy, easy to use and really easy peasy. Yeah. Okay. I hope that helps. You know, get a good EQ, compressor, reverb, limiter, delay, and learn those. 
then there later you can tons of youtube videos that you can learn from best thing yeah. is just to learn the concept how it works the most important thing is to know that how compressor functions how eq functions limiter functions once you know that functionality of it then it depends on the interface of different plugins that how you can use them to your own benefit yeah. They all do the same thing. But first thing, get a good EQ and learn to EQ. That's, I think that's the, that's the most important thing. It can get you a million miles. Yeah. Yeah. And the best part of the Pro Q3 is that it has this auto gain function. When you boost or cut EQ, it tries to uh, keep the volume level same. Mm -hmm. And it works really good. Mm -hmm. Then you can really hear what the EQ does because if, if there's no auto gain, then your ear gets tricked very easily. Okay, this sounds better because I put some highs highs on it, but actually it could be sounding worse. And that you're capable of doing it with the free plugin of Reaper as well, made by that one gentleman. So, yeah, which is really check check them all out because yeah. you can you can probably demo probably any any plugin that Absolutely. is out there. Okay, that was a thorough answer. Um, hey, last question from Patreon side. Uh, let's go to that. This is this one is from Chala. Do you guys oh, already know what this might be? Or it's Gagla. <laughs> I finally learned how to say her name. It's Chala. Chala, Chala yeah, yeah. Chala. Sorry about pronouncing it wrong before. I can write her, uh, read her inter introduction here, Yara, so you will hear. Hi, dear hostess, Chala here. A little help for the pronunciation. I hope you had, <laughs> had liked the previous games. Uh, this time you have some most likely two questions to answer and some conflicts to settle after each question, as I can presume. Okay. Uh, you can have numbers from one to four and show at the same time with your hands like you had done before. Enjoy. So, oh well, thank God it's not Monopoly this time. That that will be <laughs> that will be coming. Don't worry. That now will be the last the idea. last podcast, <laughs> and and maybe maybe some some wanna wanna see that happen. Let us know. <laughs> you don't want to see that. No, I I I'm not. I, blood I, blood I, bath. I, I'm not going to be there. I need to protect myself. Mayhem. If nothing else, that in life. Okay. That would be a great, great Patreon content, like a Monopoly, <laughs> a Monopoly game. Hey, Leo. I think I saw a version of Monopoly called Anti-Monopoly or something. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Everything know. that you do in Monopoly opposite to that. Yeah. Uh, how to get poor. Like, and then yeah. I was immediately think oh hey maybe this is the the game to play and then immediately i i get get the thought in my head to make some deals with yari and then it's already like <laughs> is it like how to get poor life is ruined like yeah. who spend, spend the money fast Don't get excited but there was a game like that it was called mad m-a-d where actually the more poor you get or basically the more money you get out of you you win oh mm. well, that was pretty pretty cool game all right so what is this game if, yeah okay uh, this one is 16 questions here and um, who is most likely to is there um, a name for this game who is most likely to is oh. the name for this game oh all right and uh, of course the, the rules are that all of us at the same time so, so with our fingers from one to four and how is oh, it going to be the order? I was rules? one, right? And them was two. I was in four and you could three. Okay. We shall do it so. So, uh, okay. Let's, let's, let's go with this madness. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is most likely to? First one, laugh at the wrong moments uh, 
it's either that guy or that guy. You guys knew fast, this one. I thought I knew. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna guess from these two options. Okay. On on three. One and a two and a three. Tie. What the hell? That's a tie. <laughs> yeah, that's a tie. <laughs> Shit. What the hell? Is there a point system? Doesn't say anything. Hey, maybe somebody should calculate the earlier first quizzes and quizzes as well. Yeah. But uh, well, this is a is this a happy happy or a bitter did, tie? Did we know. did we get points or lose points? Doesn't say here at all. Okay. It's just hey. Okay, Charla can Charla can decide. Is it minus or plus? Is it points or it's just make us happy? Make make us feel happy or miserable or whatever. Maybe that's the point. Um, you know, people just want to make us feel miserable. <laughs> then it is like that. All right. Uh, okay. That's so miserable. I will repeat this every time now. Who is most likely to get lost the easiest? The worst navigator. <laughs> you can you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not true. Oh, it's not true. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, one and a two and a three. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Oh, very true. It is so true. Very true. Very true. Very true. I, I have I have millions of stories. I have many stories. <laughs> Okay, next question. Hey, <laughs> you should have been driving that direction. <laughs> oh, I should have. No, I was wrong. Yes, you should have driven there. Well, the, the crosswalks were already like a, under some meter. But yeah, I should have told you, but I didn't. Now you're driving the wrong way. What? <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> the best is, hey, where are you going? To the venue. Do you know the way? Not really. Then why are you going that way? Well, I don't know. Punch. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew Buffy. it. It was there. I told you we should go that way. No, but I remember it's that way. You just told me that you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this turned out to be a roasting session. <laughs> Finally. Uh, okay. All right. Next one. Who is most likely to be the most sarcastic? Hmm. It's either these two guys, okay? I'm gonna guess. I don't know, but count. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. One and a two and a three. I was gonna say you or Asin. I wanted to say myself or Asim, but I didn't know which one. So yeah. So who who me won? Too. Asim. Nobody tied. Oh, okay. it's a no. tie. It's a tie. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, who is most likely to spend all their money on something useless? So that's stupid. I know this one. Oh fuck! I. Well, this is easy. Okay. <laughs> Asim. Okay, wait. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> One and a two and a three. Awesome. Awesome. Money. Won. I won. That's great. I thought it was them. Oh. What did you ask him for? Yari. I said Yari. Yeah, I was thinking him as well. But well, what, what do I buy? 
That's what oh, I was thinking. It's a something stupid. Ma- McDonald's. Oh yeah. Yarin, <laughs> <laughs> what did you, uh, Temo, what did you say? I said ask him, but uh, th- this was a tough one. Yeah, uh, because I don't know. Where are you about to say yourself? I wasn't. Uh, I was about to say you, actually. <laughs> what? <clears throat> but uh, you're the hoarder. But yeah. I don't oh, buy any hey, 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 what, what do you mean by that? Hey, 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 hey. Now we're snitching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if, if I one say, snitch show. it's like, I, I could say me as well. Like sometimes, of course, while we are touring, I tend to, you know, collect memories from each city as that, well. That's what I was useless, thinking. But which is, like, is, is it know. really useless? I mean. It's still cool memories. I mean, yeah. I mean, they end up on the fridge most of the time, like in fridge. in or outside. If they're in, then afterwards they go in, but then if they're out, they oh. remain. But yeah, hard to uh, say. If if I have something used, it's like I usually sell it or throw it away. Right. So you're in the end. You're the one who's. You I don't like a lot of use. that stuff and sell it a lot. I don't like to have useless stuff. Yeah, but but if we're literal, you actually buy a lot of stuff that ends up being useless. Not really, because I sell sell them if if they end up being useless. Yeah, but, but you still is, buy them. But it's still the useless part. Right? Because I, okay, well, give me an example. Mm. <laughs> like. See. <laughs> like uh, <clears throat> um, headphones. Yeah, but I've sold that I I don't use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, yeah, I, like I said earlier, I'm a headphone enthusiastic. I, I'm trying to find a, the best sound. But now that I've found actually a really good sound, I've kind of started to sell the other ones away. So, so I don't ha- have useless. them. I don't have them much anymore. I only mm. want to stick with the few the few best ones. Okay. Well, I can admit, used to, I used to have more headphones, but because I, I, it's hard to find them and hard to try them, and so I kind of bought them. And okay, now I ended up with being a mountain of headphones. <laughs> well, not really, but. But so Yari kind of explained himself now to win this, but Asim still won it. <laughs> I don't know which, which did it, how did this go now? <laughs> okay. But yeah, I th- Asim won that one. Um, you who mo- win. Who is most likely to punch a wall? <laughs> hmm. Okay, I know this one. <laughs> one and a two and a three. Here. <laughs> the wall puncher is here. <laughs> yeah. What do you have to say for yourself, Mister? Keep me away from the walls. <laughs> Don't build the walls. <laughs> no, no walls too close, at least to us. In. Yeah, yeah. You start hitting. You want to be in between the wall and him. Safe distance from the wall. That should be printed on my forehead. <laughs> yeah, you, you hit the walls with your forehead. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Who is most likely to forget important birthdays? Okay, I know this one. Well, <laughs> guess if I would have four hands here, I, would... <laughs> <laughs> I need to choose one. So let's do one. Then. Let's do it. Okay, one and a two and a three. Hey, <laughs> I win. <laughs> Wait, I don't. <laughs> my my response to this is just I didn't know which one to choose, so I just choose one. Yeah, one I don't us. really 
I don't really give a shit about any like special Anybody. days. Yeah, oh, that's true. <laughs> like birthdays or Christmas or you know stuff like that. Mm. I like to make the day. So I'm not really into like okay, it's gonna be this day. Okay, it's a party. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm born that way. <laughs> Next question, please. Okay. Who is who is most likely to sleep talk? Mm. Most likely to. We, we did it a bit delayed. Let's do it one and a two and a on the on the three reveal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one and a two <laughs> and a three. <laughs> hmm. Hey, no, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Again, again. I, okay. I most likely to. Most likely to. Yes. Okay, I didn't. I didn't know this. Yes, I I can't remember now exactly, but there has been some on t- some tours, some blah 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 blah, and some storytelling. And it didn't make any freaking sense. And this, since I realized that that guy is sleeping there behind the curtains, I thought it was that he's talking to me or something. But no, I can't remember. I'm trying to think what the hell it was, but it was just really funny. So I just yeah, okay. up and he's blah, 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 blah behind the curtains right away when I stand up from the lower bunk to the higher one. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then it's like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. What the hell is Yeah, happening? I should have seen this. My it was pure guess on my part. Yeah. I could have gone either with Yuka or then me, but like there's more likely to chance than yes. I have heard Yuka sleep talk as well, but like most oh, likely fuck. to. What is have me. you heard? <laughs> I was mumbling as well. Your cell of snitching in your sleep. Awesome, awesome. Fuck yes. Yeah. Okay. Next one, uh, who is most likely to be an FBI agent undercover? <laughs> okay, one and a two and a three. Hey, Hi. I, I agree with Temo. Yeah. How is it? Damn, I was correct. God damn it. Oh, Anything damn. is possible with Temo, though. Yeah, because yeah, he's, I guess he's, he's more, a... more like the observing one sometimes. So it's like, yeah, fucking hell, he's becomes, recording no, us all but, the time. No, but that actually becomes more suspicious. So that's like, yeah, yeah. obvious. Yeah, Temu mm-hmm. doesn't sell so, snitch. No. <laughs> that is true. <sighs> okay. So that becomes like something's off with this guy. Yeah, what's the mystery behind it? <laughs> Cover. <laughs> Okay, uh, who's most likely to be the best slash worst liar? Oh, so I would which one? Actually, actually divided in <laughs> this into two, right? Lying what? best, then who's the worst liar? That who can who will get caught all the time by lying? But I think we the need best to... liar. I have never lied. Oh yeah. Do you understand this? Do I understand this incorrectly, or do I understand it correctly? We just even split it in two. Should, I think yeah. it should be two separate questions. Mm. Let's split it in two. So, who is most likely to be the best liar? We go both these through first, and then we speculate. <laughs> what the hell? This is some fucked up shit. <laughs> yeah, we need to have a personal talk with Shala. Like, what's going on? What do you? Like, what are you trying here? Is she is she a psychologist, perhaps? There's a we don't know. Win, winter sun psychologist Tell us in the forum. on board. No. I believe she's a doctor. Oh, in psychology or psychiatry? No, no I don't think so. Medicine. Hmm. Doctor of making fucked up games. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> These, these are these are you the best. Play a game? Did you want to play again? Makes makes me wondering things. Okay, uh, so who is most likely to be the best liar? But does doesn't doesn't necessarily lie. 
But or, if but if this person would lie, he would be the best. <laughs> I think we need an, another episode for like uh, tell a lie about yourself, and then we're guessing uh, is this a lie? Or... Out, yeah, it's a truth or lie? <clears throat> yeah, that should be the name we of need, the game. We need, we need this game to actually to have the winner. Uh, she better not make right. have. She better not make <laughs> have I ever game for us. Yeah. Seriously, like we are already telling publicly. Like that's not gonna. <laughs> All right, let's do it. The worst human okay. being are on earth. Last, last suggestion: Should we split this in half, or do it as it is and just leave it wandering? Let's do it as it is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Who has the be- Who is the best and worst? Right. Now? Okay. Okay. One and now two and now three. <laughs> oh, well, that, that, that. well, well, well. As we as we agreed, I guess in silence at least that we will leave it there. <laughs> no. Okay. Next. Now I think is... some. Beef with chala. <laughs> oh, beef with what? No, because chala. as a human being, any human being is capable of becoming or saying the worst, or as she asked the question, who is most likely to tell, be the best at lying or the worst yeah, but liar. The question doesn't really make sense. Exactly. You cannot be best and worst at the same time. No, but as a as a capacity of a human being, as an individual, anybody can actually. Of so course, that's why I say me, because as like an individual, I don't I don't particularly say that it represents the others because anybody can. So it it, it doesn't make any sense. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what's yeah. the next next okay. fucked up question? Who's most likely to cook the best meal? Okay. This is the easy one. One and a two and a three. <laughs> the liar cooks the best. <laughs> the liar. <laughs> this is a fucked up game. <laughs> and you love it. <laughs> we love it. We love it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm the, loving it. There are good spicy cooking skills there. Uh, yeah. Okay, who is most likely to be the best roommate? Answer the worst roommate question too, if you all think it wouldn't cause any problem at future tours. Okay. Yeah. So wait, first was who is the be- who who is who's most likely to be the best roommate? Okay, one, one and a two and a three. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, you yeah, win. but answer the worst roommate question too. Is this, does this <laughs> equal that as well? But then. It's either Jukka or Teemu. Worse. Tem, Temu is quiet and doesn't party too much, so it's easy to sleep. And me? And you're just outgoing, relaxed guy. And also don't party that much. Hmm. Come sleeping next to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, warm teddy bear knocks nice to sleep next to. No, me. <laughs> 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 Asi, was that some jealousy in your eyes or what was that? I was like teddy bear and sleep next to something that we should know <gasps> hey but this is not the question where it's supposed ah, to yeah, mm, some stuff yeah, yeah, mm, diverting the teddy bear talk now you know? yeah, but, hey, <clears throat> hey yeah please lie a bit more yeah yeah oh sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay who's most likely to get into trouble with traffic police. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is a fucked up game. <laughs> this is fucking great. <laughs> you can you made this question yourself? Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> Check it from the message board. God damn it. Cool. Okay, one and a two and a three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the outlaw dude. But still, Asim knows or the directions. It? Directions better than me. But well, that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> How does that help? Explain. <laughs> How does that get into trouble with the traffic police? But then, at least yeah, because I have, take, I have to take I have to take the know. wrong <laughs> turns in order to get to the right direction. So obviously, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So next one: Who is most likely to make the worst dad jokes? Hmm. Dad jokes. Most likely to. I already know that. It's. I'm torn between two, but okay. okay. I'm gonna. This is purely a guess. Okay. One and a two and a three. Hmm. What the hell? Oh, I agree with them. That's good. Okay. I. I. I almost said you, Jukka. Well, me? You was a well, fucking idiot. Yeah. The, uh, I me. said me because I, I enjoy like stupid <laughs> jokes. No, no, the question Thanks, was man. who is most likely to make <laughs> who is most likely to make worst dad jokes? Because all jokes of Yuka are legitimately cool. So who is or, most or likely? The worst, or just the worst, but Demo is the only dad here, so he's kind of like the only oh. official person. To make dad jokes, kind. Of. That, yeah, but that, that but, but, but the but thing is, worst, worst dad jokes, well, not the best dad jokes. He, he, yeah, yeah, he but makes the best he. and the worst because he's the only dad. Does mm -hmm. he do those jokes? We don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. this, maybe this yeah. one he's doing now. Yeah, but do you make dad joke jokes? Too. That's the mystery. Actually, quite oh, a lot of that's dad. a funny dad mystery, joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think so far on Twitch over the past year and a half, I would have made, or I was, because I have the channel points in Twitch, which are called dad jokes, so the viewers can redeem them. So I yeah. have probably made over 2K dad jokes. So then I, you should have gotten the win. No, but I, I read them, like I don't make them. So. Oh. Mm. So, because they asked me to, and I then speak about it. So it's like if I were to make any dad jokes, I I don't know. Maybe mm. Temu is the fitting one here. You know, Maybe. who has the legitimate uh, legitimacy with this yeah. topic? Could be. Okay. Yeah, legitimacy instead of lying. <laughs> uh, or or giving directions. Uh, no, making. What is doing direction? Hey, what can we roast you about? Yeah, I was thinking as well. He's, I'm not I'm being he's un, beg, unfair. He's here. begging for it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, when I opened my mouth, I was thinking about it that oh hell. I I hell's gonna now, make now I step went too far. I think we Again. need to make we need to make an alliance for the next podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Lying and keep Going uh, right down. Alliance. <laughs> Alliance. Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Yeah. That was a dad joke right there. That was a dad joke right there. See? Yeah. We have to make an <laughs> Okay. Um, who is most likely to help? An old lady crossed the road. Hmm. Well, this is a bit distant that because everybody, I Can think, I say everyone? In, in time of in in need would yeah, do. I think everyone would. And it's kind of like if I now choose one over the others, doesn't make it doesn't yeah. mean it's so that uh, oh. the others wouldn't. But why not old man over the road? 
Why is it okay. be a lady? Let's do it. Who's most likely <laughs> to help an old lady cross the road for everyone else except for Yari, who will be an old man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the old man helper. Oh, yeah. Well, I, would cr- I might help you cross the road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. It, yeah, that 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 really doesn't make any sense. I'm question. gonna, yeah, okay. Well, we have to choose one now here. Obey okay. the rules and yes. Okay, one and a two and a three. Hmm. All righty. Yeah. Asim one. Asim, Asim got this. No, because it's yet again, it's a personal thing, and I said like, as human beings, we all are capable of doing that. So most likely to, we all would. Mm. I said this because when we were making some crowdfunding videos and Teemu came to my place, he actually helped some was it old man or old lady who was mm-hmm. fallen in the ice. Oh wow. Oh. Right. Yeah. Fallen in the ice. And he was drunk or something. Was it a man or a lady? A, a guy. Um yeah. He, he was like living next to you and I took him to his apartment and yeah, he was in really bad condition. Yeah, that's why I said them. Yeah. Along the way, I'm pretty sure we all have done it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Many, many times, not just helping over the road, but in some Caesar and very serious situations actually. Many times being in your head. Okay. Um, who would most likely get away with murder? Okay. <laughs> what? <clears throat> oh. But not literally murder. It's like get get away from something. Or okay. Well, what she mean literally murder? <laughs> what kind of murder are we talking? Murdering. Uh, Orange. And so now, n- now, it is, now the YouTube algorithm is going to hit us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This so is... We should start actually copywriting these so that, you know, Shala doesn't end up like after a few years, she ends up writing a book like, hey, I know about these guys. Wait a minute. This guy is gay. <laughs> this guy is likely to. This guy is. <laughs> 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 like, okay. Okay. Okay, now not that, literally the M. M- now, now, now that I said the M word out loud. But uh, not literally, but get away with things. Let's say, like, who is most likely to, to get away with things? A thing, yeah. Things. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Asin Teemu, you agree? Yeah. Get away with things and nothing else. <laughs> not the yeah. M word. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's not piss the YouTube lords. No, let's just piss ourselves here. <laughs> yeah, first. <laughs> I'm, I'm more concerned about this here than the YouTube lords here right now. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. This is again like a thing that doesn't. If I say this, it doesn't mean that. Everybody could do that or couldn't do it. Yeah, this is a hard one. Okay, I have my reasonings as well. There we go. Okay. One and a two and a three. (laughs) Oh, okay. If I can be an FBI undercover agent, Mm. then I'm capable of everything as well. But hopefully you're capable of with things and not with this question. It, it, no, that yeah, exactly. I mean, you should that is you should question. maybe join the FBI. Maybe they're gonna be knocking my door once or this the CIA. is released. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Using Taco. triggering words again. Before we know it, they're already hearing this podcast and going, "Wait a minute, let him finish." Then <laughs> knock, knock, like, "How are you doing? <laughs> How you already, doing?" I'm already seeing red by the triggering words again, but again. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. Um, okay. Last one. 
who is most likely to give away secrets after one beer? The one, I think. Or is it one beer? Hard to say. Okay. Give away secrets. That's none of us. The fuck? <laughs> it has to be one of us. <laughs> At the moment, we need to make a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Just that laugh there, Yari's laugh. He's... <laughs> come on, Azir. Yeah, Azir, come on. Throw your fist in the air. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Okay, on three. One and a two and a three. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if it's gotta be this kind of a stupid question, it's gotta be me then. <laughs> well, you won, but hey, Yari. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry what, about what, that. What's, what's, what's that? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Or Asim? Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You were, you were asking Yari, what's up then when you come? Mita pittua. Yeah, exactly. It was easy for Yuka, like, wait a minute. Hey, hey, hey. Yari, I think, I think Yuka is just a very, very outgoing person and likes to talk stuff. Nah. But Asim, what is it? What is, you should be angry to yourself then, I guess. What is it with yourself? No, because I, I don't believe in it. I just said, oh. none of us, none of us do it. If like, yeah. when it's a stupid, like, it's a stupid fucking question. Mm. It's like, who is most likely to? I mean, if we are not, then we have to abide by the rules. Well, then I risk me instead I, I, of anybody Actually, else. I misunderstood it. It's like after one beer of talking about things, not, yeah. not about others or this, just talking about what is happening, but secrets or like... Secrets no. of the universe. No, no, yeah. Yeah, but hey. I would be a no. bad FBI agent if I <laughs> start talking about secrets after one beer. Unless it's a purpose, deliberate purpose. I to give mani out manipulate. Secret. Give out manipulative secrets. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, that was the last one of the quiz. I don't know what was the purpose to count points, who's going to wield, but. I have a feeling who might who uh, might have won this one. <laughs> <laughs> good or bad? I have a very good feeling about this as well. Who has? Yeah, I have a very very charming Charlie. analogy. Who has won? Yeah, yeah but you win something, <laughs> isn't yeah. that the point? <laughs> which which you? Oh, you mean? I said, oh. <laughs> what is the prize? Is there a prize? Has there been a prize in the earlier? Yeah. She better be telling me about that very soon. <laughs> okay, we will then. I'm, st I'm still mad about that directions question. Still hey. <laughs> he's, still, he's only mad about the directions question. Like, look, that's a selfish perspective right here. <laughs> okay. Next question, who is the most selfish? Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's not give them any, we, any ideas add, anymore. Yeah, should we add more questions uh, ourselves uh, now? Like, well, who's most add, likely add one to be more selfish? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no more snitching. Okay, yeah. Hey, but that was the that was the last from uh, Patreon side. Really, really All enjoying right. quiz again, Charla. Thank you. A yeah. uh, little bit of fun controversy quiz. there, maybe in a black humor way, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't really. No, no, of course not. Of course not. All is, all is well. All is well. Um, okay, but let's check a few questions still from Facebook. Um, all right. Uh, that has been what asked do we have here? before. And there's Leopold Peters or Le Leopold Peters or, or so. I'm sorry if I pronounce it pretty incorrectly. Uh, Yari, what happened to the Telecaster from the debut album? Can you tell us about it and how you got a sick metal tone with a Telecaster? Uh, I still have it. It's right over there. 
uh, I haven't used it in a long time because it's not been like maintained or adjusted. But I've been thinking about, and also because it doesn't ha have Evertune, but I've been thinking about installing an Evertune on it. The last time I used it, it was on time recordings. I used it for some clean sounds. It's uh, really best for cleans. But of course, with almost any guitar, you can make it sound heavy metal if you just run it through a heavy metal amp and you know, and you can make it sound metal. Especially of course, nowadays. Uh, first album, sorry, what? Especially nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, on the first album for a few songs like Death and the Healing, uh, Beautiful Death, and Sadness and Hate, I, I wanted a little different flavor. And that Telecaster def definitely has, uh, it's more fat sound, more, more ballsy than, than the Jackson that I used for the other songs. Like really, like the bass is more in the sub, sub bass. So it's a really, really nice sound. And had, it has a little bit of this kind of Western clang to it. Yeah, it's true. also cool, cool thing, cool, cool little flavor. But yeah, I, I think I should maintain it sooner. Put an ever tune it, tune on it. Uh -huh. but it's a, also, one thing I, I don't really like like that guitar any, anymore because it has pretty round radius on the fretboard. I'm, 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 I can take it, no problem. It's okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, these days I really like more flatter, uh, flatter uh, radiuses. You like flat earth. Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, flat, flat earth flat. radius. <laughs> oh, oh, that, yeah, that thing. Yeah. I didn't understand anything, but now that you mentioned this term, now I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I bought it, uh, bought it from um, Musa Maailma from Hels Helsinki, and I went to the store and Pretty much right every telecaster they had there and this one was the best so and it was really cheap i think it was like three four hundred uh markas well it's pretty much the same as these days like three four hundred euros so yeah that got a good deal and i think they gave me some discount also nice nice okay well what about the uh the sick metal tone well what about it Did you I, yeah. I missed it because I was checking. Ran it through a tri-axis and uh, mm -hmm. simul class, Mesa Boogie. <laughs> and it will sound metal. Cool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then, um, next question uh, for Yari as well from Adam Kolda. What's the best way to learn how to scream like you do, especially in songs like Beyond the Dark Sun? So mm. Yes, what would be the best way to learn to stream? For me, what would be the best source of. I'm not sure if learning. I'm the best teacher because I used to like really abuse my voice to get that sound. It didn't came naturally or easy in any length for me. Mm. So it took quite a few years <clears throat> to kind of develop my screaming style. Uh, because I don't have a kind of that natural rasp in my voice. It's more more clean, always been. But I've always liked the raspy tone, like James Hetfield, Black Album, or you know Jeff Walker from Carcass, mm. and those sort of styles. Or even like hard rock singing, like Sebastian Bach in uh, Slave to the Crying Album. So I always liked the raspy tone, and it, it took me years to get it. Uh, but I think just doing it, try to do it a lot. That's what I did. I just forced my voice to do it. But I would say warm up these days. Check, check some warm up things from YouTube, like lip rolls and stuff. Drink a lot of fluids, water especially. And not cold. These days when I do singing sessions, I boil the water and just drink warm water. So it will not... Um, then also develop your lungs and try to put lots of air. Of course, it, it will be difficult because if you use a lot of air, you can do long, long kind of uh, sentences. And 
the, the lower you uh, the lower you go with the crawling, the more air you have to use. If you want higher, then you have to more use less air and kind of squeeze your uh, what is it called Flat larynx or you know the easiest way to explain it. It's the core relationship as just like a balloon. Hmm. You fill up the balloon and you lose it like this. Yeah, it will go out, but it will create a very low frequency sound. But yeah. if you want the squeaky sound, then you pull it. Yeah. Maybe but the using of the air is very important. You gotta control that. And that also, just years of practice will de develop your lungs. And obviously, I've had the lung surgery, but because I've sang all my life, it kind of keeps the lungs strong. Mm. So it's important. And these days I do even like breathing exercises before I start singing. I mean, if your lungs lungs are well well and strong, then it's more more easier to control the throat. Hmm. What kind of breathing exercise? I do a little bit of I've tried the Wim Hof stuff, and then I have the like the little breathing exercise machine that I've used on the tours. You guys seen it? Yeah. yeah. You just blow on it, and uh, you know. It, goes in the water you can do it even like a take a like a coke bottle put more water in there i used to do this in the hospital actually mm. and just a small uh what is letku hose yeah like a little hose and you just bubble the water in the bottle you you blow on it and it makes your lungs stronger yeah yeah warming up is really really essential at least well doing these backing vocals, growls and all, but screaming wise, I, I'm not there in that. I, but you, you I, can I, give I, advice to us, yeah. Yeah, but you already summed it up with us and quite a lot that warming up the lip rolls and properly, that's, I think that's a big key for many, many things. And uh, technique wise, I don't know, because I, I never really thought about it. Oh, kind of like only the way how to do the growl and the singing, but it's, you need to listen to your body if something hurts and you feel that something is not right and you're not doing it right. Yeah. Or maybe you do it, you need to adapt certain different things then how to make it better or different. For me, definitely in the beginning, it, it hurt at times and still maybe at some, some days it can hurt. But it depends on the hurt. Mm. And you, you can kind of tell if, okay, this is not that serious yet. But then sometimes you can tell, okay, now I need to stop. Mm. So you, you really got to carefully listen to your body. Mm. What, what, is, uh, what can you can do? As, as in them, do you have any, any other views or anything to add here? No, I think that summarizes it pretty, pretty well. Mm. Yeah, well, warm up, warm up and uh, sing along with a lot of your favorite uh, bands and singers. What about uh, if we're talking precisely about screaming, then it's Zen of screaming. Yeah, that's Mel a Melissa, Melissa Cross, right? Good uh, yeah. warm up routine. So, I do uh, it. And then there, I guess in her DVD or something that she did, there's more yeah. than just the warm ups. Yeah, I, ha I have that, that DVD. Um, one guy who is called, um, just a second, let me check quickly extreme vocals coach or something yeah extreme vocal institute nowadays um i admire that guy quite much because he really goes in depth of trying to tell you exactly how melissa cross was for her time really good but yeah. this guy he, he's is on youtube slightly, this guy yeah yeah extreme has he done like vocal. videos about chris cornell and uh, no, no i'm talking about completely extreme vocals Okay. Uh, he focuses mostly on that. Extreme Within, um, Vocal Institute. Yeah. yeah. And um, he's he's really good at explaining you everything about different kind of screams, any kind of screams. Okay. So Melissa Cross concentrated on more factual point about your body, like uh, how to sustain your body in order to do things yeah, and so on. So more, she like, more like warm up routine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But he really goes in depth about explaining that what kind of body how you could use your body in order to enhance your way of doing things and your posture mm. 
your um, certain way of creating a certain sound with what kind of you know yeah um, for me it's hard to explain how i actually do it because i just started doing it right like i was forcing my voice to distort yeah i mean that's that's how i started as well i kind of literally used to not being able to speak for a day or something like that because i just gave it all out but then it takes you years and years and years of understanding and then you start developing different techniques like for instance when i did the growls back in 2010 for another band the nibiru one then it was completely different tone that i used then the other things that i did i used another tone then for the circle i used another tone so you kind of start understanding how you can like use your abilities to create different tones and then you force yourself by recording that's the most essential part that many people don't understand record yourself hear yourself experiment try mm. till you understand that you know what's the difference because after all you're not going to be an opera screamer i don't i highly doubt that that's going to become a profession right so like um as long as you have a microphone learn how to use your microphone that's the most important thing because certain things you're able to achieve by using less force less volume less exertion and getting less exhausted with the microphone than you do just like by sitting and doing it so the acoustics of your room matter so i would highly suggest to record yourself with a microphone and analyze that yeah that's a good tip Reco- yeah. recording your vocals is you know it's a must you have to do that and then you can really hear what you sound like because yeah. you don't sound, sound like what you sound in your head yeah. very good point very good yeah point. totally and i think it's great that there's so many good sources nowadays like like the youtube channels i, th- I think back in the day when when uh we started out trying to try to sing then it was really, it was really like really. figuring it out on your yeah. own and like yeah. a lot of trial and error but i think nowadays you can save a lot of that hassle by by actually looking things up easily and you can probably um, even physically save yourself with all these yeah exactly warm up things and everything yeah. destroying it all, literally one one method that i hear people talking about a lot is the um complete vocal what is it called is it complete also complete vocal, vocal? Yeah, complete vocal yeah. technique. I think uh, from Netherlands. Uh, I think yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of Finnish yeah. people went to study there. Like, uh, mm. then you become like a comp- like a certified complete vocal technique teacher, and yeah, yeah seeing a lot of that around. But but I, I checked some of the the some of their stuff, some of their methods in YouTube as well, and they seemed like pretty pretty clear and straightforward. Also, like for for even like extreme sounds. Mm. They, I think, but they, of course, they go through all kinds of different, different sounds and styles and all kinds of things. Yeah. I think the metal thing might be good, but I think they also that extreme, uh, what was it, uh, extreme institute or something. Yeah, well, one thing I would add that warm ups are really fucking boring, <laughs> but do them anyways because it, yeah. it pays off. Yeah, there's definitely a difference. I mean, you you want to get to the singing, and you know I want to get to the singing fast, but yeah. it pays off if you warm up properly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's true. You're gonna imagine your lungs <coughs> and your diaphragm to be controlled just like as a balloon, because mm. you need to start imagining it as a balloon in the beginning. It would take time to. That once you get used to it, you would not think about it consciously. It would just sit in subconscious. But um, yeah, yeah. The same way you need to understand that how you can control your diaphragm and how much you know because obviously you can't control it by your hand so you need to imagine it like how much push you need to give and how much air you're letting out yeah. and and also like that. learn how to sing clean that of helps course. with the crawling too i think yeah definitely it's just the creates more uh perspective and information of your own voice how, how it works and you develop better technique mm. overall develop and for me when i'm recording i actually usually get a better growling sound if i first sang clean vocals if i first start growling then i can't do cleans anymore <laughs> that well 
I usually start with clean stuff if I'm recording. Then, then the voice is really like warm with, and uh, really like nice with the growls. Yeah, that's a nice, nice sum up. But yeah, warming, warming up is really, really crucial. Everybody does that. Everybody needs to do it, even the highest pros. Boring, but do it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that was really thorough. Those answer. days are those days are gone. Axel Rose, smoking a cigarette. Having a glass of wine and you know <laughs> nothing matters, and we see the long-term results of that. So avoid it. Yeah, you know, avoid yeah. those myths of rock and roll. That's there why they're called myths. Myths. Yeah. Really, 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 really good ending point. Uh, anything else to that? I think we sum up that no, one. I think that was. And that was the last question for oh, it was... for this podcast. Uh, number nine all right it was really really in, i enjoyed it everybody i think highly yeah. highly really really nice questions a lot of talks really good questions guys this time oh, yep. from Thank side you. to side and, and uh see you then in the next one to come so all the best and take care everybody yeah Bye, yeah. Have a, see you guys. have a nice have a nice holidays everybody yeah christmas and next year Bye bye